All right, guys, so today I wanted to bring up a recent study that has to do with the hip thrust. Now, the reason I have the title as it is is because a lot of people know Brett Contreras. He's known as the glute guy, and he has really become popular in the last... I mean, he's been around for a long time, over a decade that he's been putting out work, but he's really blown up in the last five to seven years, I would say. He's become known for getting people, especially women, bigger butts, basically, you know, developing the glute muscles. He has really been a big proponent of the hip thrust specifically. Uh, you know, he's got a whole gym dedicated to it. He has new equipment specifically for it. And so this study kind of contradicts some of what he says. Now, a lot of the claims are also that it can not just help you with glute size, but it will help you be a better squatter. It will help you be a better deadlifter. It'll help you be a better runner. You know, it just has these myriad of benefits. And so I do want to talk about what this study showed. Now, it is just one study, but I do think it's an important study and it is being talked about by others in the fitness industry. Now, I actually remember seeing a video by Chris Duffin, who was on the podcast. We actually did talk about this and he is friends with Brett Contreras, but he put out a video, I think probably close to two years ago now about this topic. It's, uh, hip thrusters. I actually love them. I know I just said we're going to diss them, but I love them. It's a great cueing movement. So really good. Uh, you could see me doing something like that if you ever watch my video on uh, glute activation warm up. I'm very big on movement patterns and trying to ingrain those, and get everything firing properly before you go train heavy. And that's something that I would rotate in, body weight or with light movement. But once we get to doing heavy weighted hip thrusters for glute development, not only do I think it's not beneficial in carrying over to the core movements and movement patterns needed, I think it can actually be detrimental. And I, I believe that based off of, one, my own experience, and what I see in other people that are, that are using those heavily or promoting that. Now, what he said was that the hip thrust is a fine exercise, but that people do way too much weight. You know, you have some of these people maxing out, doing one rep maxes on hip thrusts, which I really don't see much of a point in doing that, but they'll max out, they're doing six, seven, 800 pound hip thrusts. And Chris Duffin's point was that it can be a good exercise if you use it for the right reasons. And he gave a proportion of what a hip thrust to a deadlift would usually be and saying that, you know, unless you're doing a 2000 pound deadlift, you really shouldn't be doing an 800 pound hip thrust that you can use lighter weight and still make it very hard and get what you're trying to get out of it by squeezing at the top. So this study basically looked at actual hypertrophy as best as they could measure with an ultrasound between back squats with a full range of motion and hip thrusts. They looked at quad hypertrophy and they looked at glute hypertrophy. Now, a lot of the studies and a lot of the work that Brett Contreras has done was with EMG, looking at the electrical activity in the muscle, okay? And that is what I would call a surrogate marker, which is another thing I'm gonna make a video about, is looking at surrogate markers rather than what we are actually interested in, in this case, actual hypertrophy. So there are ways that, you know, people might look at muscle protein synthesis or EMG activity and say, wow, well, this was higher, so it probably leads to more muscle growth. But just because it might make sense that that could work that way, doesn't mean that's actually how that works. Now, this study looked at that and they found that both quad and glute hypertrophy was superior with a full back squat compared to a hip thrust. I know some of the other studies that were done compared a front squat to a hip thrust, and generally a front squat is going to be more quad dominant and less glute dominant. So that is something to consider as well with those former studies. Another thing we have to look at is who the study was done on. You know, a lot of studies in fitness in general are really untrained individuals, people who don't have a lot of experience. And I think it can be very hard to extrapolate that to people with a lot of experience just because everything tends to work and to different degrees in a newbie compared to somebody who's really advanced. So this used women who had been training. And you know, if you look at Brett's clients, I think they're probably 90, 95% female. So I think that is relevant here. And again, they found more hypertrophy in the glutes from the back squat than they did from the hip thrust. And of course, much more quad hypertrophy from the back squats than the hip thrusts as well. Now you will have some people see this and say, well, okay, the hip thrusts are just completely BS then. There's no reason to ever do them. Just squat and you're fine. That is actually more of an extreme stance than I would take in this case. To me, you know, a lot of things have utility just because one study shows it might not be the best at something doesn't mean that there's no reason to use it. So 
when would I use a hip thrust? Well, for example, I think some people might know I don't do much heavy squatting and deadlifting anymore uh, due to past injuries, some other health reasons. So I have stuck with mostly machine work and hip thrusts in the past, different ways to work my legs. They haven't actually shrunk at all after not doing the squats and deadlifts, which is another thing I might talk about in a separate video. But really my, my leg size has stayed mostly the same and I did work my way up with hip thrusts. So if you do have issues squatting or deadlifting, hip thrusts are a great movement to still work a lot of those same muscles. Maybe you might have to do more volume, but that's one of the benefits too, is that you can probably do a higher frequency of hip thrusts compared to squats and deadlifts. I think Brett has some of his clients doing hip thrusts three or even more times per week. Usually you're not gonna be wanting to do a ton of squats and deadlifts three times a week. I do think there's also the benefit that you are going to be able to fully load that. So of course, with a full back squat, you get the full stretch. You know, if you go all the way down, you are really getting the glutes in a more stretch position than you're typically going to get from a hip thrust, at least from most of the hip thrusts that I've seen done. Perhaps if you were to elevate your feet, you could get even further down. But for the most part, you're not getting a full stretch. However, just due to the angulation of the body and gravity, you are able to really load the glutes in that fully contracted position. And I do think that can be of benefit. So I definitely don't want this to look like it's an attack on Brett or anybody who says that the hip thrusts are a great exercise. I definitely don't use them to the extent that Brett does. Um, even with female clients of mine, I usually don't incorporate them a ton. If we're able to do squats and deadlifts, I will incorporate them, but not necessarily every workout or anything like that. So I try to look at, you know, what this person's actual goals are and how we can incorporate various exercises to meet their different goals. So I think it's all relative to your goals. Like I've said a couple times now, I think that they have a benefit in terms of being able to load them at a specific point in the range of motion. I think you can do them more frequently. And also, I mean, this study does show, as do other studies, that you're not gonna get nearly as much quad activation from a hip thrust compared to, say, a squat. So if you are somebody that is quad dominant and you want to work on your glutes more, this could help you there. If you're somebody who you know already do a lot of work for your quads and they're getting exhausted, even if they're not necessarily a dominant muscle group, but you just can't work them anymore, the hip thrust can allow you to really work those muscles in a different way without having the quads being overly involved. So I don't think that it's something to just say, you know, one study, we're good, <laughs> no more hip thrust. I think it's a fine exercise. So I just wanted to bring attention to this study because I think it's important that people see the data that's out there. You know, I'm interested to see what Brett has to say about this. I'm interested to see what other people in the industry have to say about this and if this will change anything or if they're just gonna go by their anecdote and say, okay, well, these are the results I'm getting, so I'm not gonna change anything. You know, I wouldn't shy away from the hip thrust, but I wouldn't take any single person's word as gospel. I think you should still be focusing on squats and deadlifts for most people. If you can't, there are other great exercises as well. There are good machines, leg press is great. Hip thrust is one good exercise, so I wouldn't ignore it. Um, but I've never really been in the camp of thinking that it's this magical exercise. Um, like I said, I incorporate it, but only for specific reasons at specific times. So anybody else who's seen the study or has heard about this topic, I'd love to hear what you have to say. If you like the hip thrust, if you don't like it, comment down below uh, and let me know if you wanna see more videos like this where I talk about studies that have just come out. I'm gonna do a deadlift here. With, uh, with some good glute firing. Boom, boom. Boom. Okay. The next one's gonna be slow because I've really got to think about how to do this wrong. Notice, I'm slightly unhinged here at the top. Glutes fired late. Hope you saw that. But a simple fact is I'm unhinged and my glutes are not firing to the optimal level. Anytime you see anybody standing like this, you know for a fact the glutes can't be firing properly. So to finish with full glute activation, it's gonna look like this. Not like this, like this, not like this. So, boom, right here, standing tall. You can see the exact same thing on squatting. So standing erect, solid. I'm gonna get my full glute activation. We're talking about how. Or I could start like this. Bars a little bit forward, unhinged. And all my reps in between are gonna be kind of like this. Not firing optimally. 
it's all about, you know, we're, we're working the glutes, but it's not just the glutes. To fully activate them, understand it's a system, not a muscle group. We're not doing concentration curls here, okay? 